In this video tutorial we're going to be looking at how to combine both a grass and a more solid material in order to create a kind of grass crete slash permeable paving effect in V-Ray for Rhino. To start this we're going to just open up our Rhino and I'm going to open up the perspective view and we're going to begin by just creating a plane in here and I'm just going to make a rectangular plane and we're going to do it 10 meters by 10 meters. Now I'm working in meters in my units but this also works if you're using millimeters or any other units as well. Um, you can also do this on a sloped surface but for the sake of this tutorial we're going to just be using a flat plane for this. Now we're going to begin by creating our solid material which in this case is going to be a concrete. So to do this I'm going to open up my V-Ray asset editor found on the left here in this little V icon or you can find it up in your V-Ray path. If you can't see this it might be that you need to assign V-Ray as your current renderer which is under render, current renderer and V-Ray for Rhino. So let's open up our V-Ray asset editor and we're going to begin by going to the materials tab here creating a new generic material there and we're going to call this concrete. Then in this material, under the diffuse, I'm just going to click on the color texture slot, select a bitmap, and just locate a concrete texture here. And I'm just going to use this simple concrete texture I've got here. Now, we can also go in and add sort of reflection or bump to this, but for this particular tutorial, I'm going to keep this really simple because we're going to be looking at how to combine the two together. So we can always go back and add more complexity to our textures at a later date. So now we've made our concrete material, I'm going to assign it to this plane. And I'm just going to do that by right clicking and apply to selection like so. Now, if we open up our V-Ray frame buffer window, just by clicking on the icon in the asset editor here, and we bring this into view, and then I'm going to click on my interactive renderer. We can see that we're starting to render out that surface and we've got my concrete texture applied to it like so. So that's working quite nicely and we're going to just move that over here so we can see it more clearly. Now I'm going to keep my interactive renderer on while we adjust this material here. And what we're going to start by doing is we're going to add a displacement to this concrete in order to give us our kind of solid pieces of material that are going to poke up through the grass essentially. So to do this we're going to just click on the add attribute option of the material here we're going to add in a displacement, like so. We're going to scroll down to that displacement and turn it on. And then under there, we're just going to select 2D displacement for now. Now, in there, I'm going to click on the texture slot and we're going to just scroll down and we're going to apply a tiles texture, like so. And as you can see, once that's in, it's already starting to displace that texture. And by displace, I mean it's sort of pushing it up or down based on a color value in this image here. Now, the best way to understand this is to make your texture black and white. So what we're gonna do is we're just changing that orange to a black tone there and keeping the lines white. And what this does is it will push the black down and it will pull the white up in order to kind of give it that displacement of the surface of the texture and give it this kind of waffle structure that we've got going on here. Now I actually want mine to be the inverse of this. I want to push these squares up so they're kind of poking upwards. So what we'll do is we're just going to invert that color by making it white. And you can actually do that just using the little kind of scroller there to make that white. And we'll go down to our mortar and we'll make it into a black color like so. Then what we're going to do, let's add in a few more tiles. It's four by four at the moment, but let's make it 20 by 20 for the sake of this effect like so. And I think we might also make the lines a little bit thicker. So let's make it a kind of 0.8 or maybe even a one by one. Let's try that. So we've got these little bits poking up. And now I'm happy with that kind of placement of my pattern. I'm going to hit the back button to go back to the texture. And then we're just going to lower the amount of that displacement. Now this value usually relates to your units. I'm in meters at the moment, so it's pushing it up by one meter. So I want it a lot less than that. I'm going to do it a sort of 0.1 I think somewhere around there. So we've just got a kind of rough pushing up of the texture. Now what you might find is it's slightly rounding some edges and it might be kind of distorting these a little bit. If you find that's happening if you scroll down in your displacement and we can always kind of up the resolution here 
and this will kind of tidy up some of those edges and it should make the image slightly sharper. So you can always adjust that resolution just to kind of increase the sort of accuracy of the displacement because by default it might have it at quite a low value. So I'm kind of happy with my grid there. And what we're now going to do is we're now going to apply our grass onto this using a V-Ray fur material to give us the grass effect. And what I want is I want the grass to be happening everywhere that is not being pushed up in the concrete. So it's essentially going to fill in these little gaps we've got in our material here. Now to do this, we're going to just start by making a grass material. So I'm going to click on create asset, go to materials and make a new generic material. We'll call this grass. And we're going to keep this very simple again. We're just going to change the diffuse, click on our texture, select bitmap and drop in a kind of generic grass texture like so. So it's sort of very simple for the time being. Now we've made that, we're now going to also create a V-Ray fur material. Um, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can go into your objects and create it from here, or we can just click add fur to selection, which is the easiest way. So I'm going to make sure my plane is selected, click on my add fur to selection in my V-Ray toolbar here, and you'll see it's got a little line poking up from it and we've now got these strands of grass that have started growing out of our surface there. And if we open up our asset editor, we then have fur appearing in the geometries tab and you can also find it up here, there. Now what I want to do first is give this kind of grass our grass material. So I'm gonna just scroll all the way down, go to material, turn it on and select my grass material there. And there we've got a kind of grassy texture. Now what's happening here is obviously it's very big. We've got a length of four meters in there. So we want to sort of reduce that right down to start with. It's also very fat. So we want to kind of make sure it's a lot slimmer like so. And it might not be very dense. So we're going to up the density. If you find you're hitting a wall on that kind of count value, you can always type in a value you want, 100 or 1000 even to hit there. And as you can see, what it's doing is it's just filling that whole square but what I want is I want it to kind of miss out wherever we hit a kind of block in our kind of pushed up texture below. And if I turn it on and off, you can see there that it's sort of hiding underneath. It's kind of covering up our concrete texture. Now, in order to make this sort of a bit more hit and miss and to only affect the sort of channels that are appearing in this texture, we need to combine our density map here with the displacement map we have in our concrete. Now to do that, we can just go back to our concrete, go down to our displacement map here. I'm going to right click and copy that displacement texture. We're going to go back to our geometry, find our fur, and we're going to paste it in the density map. And we're going to paste as instance. Now what you'll probably find is because the displacement map is kind of pushing up on the white areas and pushing down on the black, the way the density map works is it will only grow grass in the white areas of the map and it won't grow them in the black. So it's actually doing the opposite of what we want. It's go growing grass on all the pushed up bits of texture rather than in the channels. So what I actually need to do is I need to inverse this texture in order for it to act correctly. So in order to do that, we're gonna right click and clear this quickly. And instead of sort of just pasting it straight in, keep our density around a thousand, we're going to click on the texture slot we're going to apply a spline curve first and what this will allow us to do is we can then in the input paste in our grid texture and what we can do is we can inverse it using this spline curve and to do that all we need to do is hit this value option we're going to scroll down and this is a kind of curves value here and if we just pull down on the right side and pull up on the left side essentially inverting that curves you'll see it's inverting the texture for us. And now in our preview, we're getting grass only in the gaps between these blocks there. And now we can go back. And what's kind of great about this is we can still sort of edit the length of the grass. So I can kind of chop it down if I need to be, and it will only be appearing in those little boxes as well. And because we've used that same map that we're using for the displacement, it means I can go back to my concrete and let's say we want bigger tiles now. I don't want them this small anymore. We can go back into our displacement, click on the map, and let's say we'll do 10 by 10 tiles this time. It will do 10 by 10, but the kind of grass that's going with it is also adjusting because it's using the exact same map 
to do the fur placement as it is to do the tiles. So they're kind of working together. They're an instance of one another, so they'll copy whatever the other is doing. And this is really useful because it allows you to kind of quickly adjust these parameters on the fly to kind of get the exact look you're looking for. And I mean, in the tiles, we've got different tile options. So we can do kind of different bonds of tile. We can do sort of different patterns here as well. You can play around with that kind of mortar gap to if it's not sort of too big or too small. So we've got a lot of sort of variation we can do. And then we can always go back to the fur as well and kind of make this a bit longer if we want to, a bit more overgrown, or we can kind of tone it back if we need to as well. So you've got a lot of options to be able to customize both the grass and the concrete textures with which you've made this particular material. Now this is using the kind of inbuilt tile texture that comes in Vero, but it might also be that you want a kind of custom texture for these tiles. Maybe you've designed a kind of paving pattern that you want or a particular kind of gradient that you want to add in. And this we can add in as well. All we need to do is find a program to make that texture. And as an example, I've actually made one here in Illustrator. This is just made with kind of black and white squares here. I've just made these sort of rectangles and arranged them on my grid. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna go file, export, and export this out from Illustrator. And you see here, I've already sort of saved it out as a JPEG image. And this can be done in Photoshop or Illustrator or kind of whatever 2D drawing kind of platform you use. You could even draw it on your iPod or by hand if you want to. As long as you can then import it as a JPEG into Rhino, anything will work. So once you've made that, if we go back to our Rhino file, I'm going to go back to my concrete in my displacement. And instead of this tiles map, I'm going to go back and we're just going to kind of clear this out, remove it. And we're going to drop in instead this new custom map we've got here. Shall we open it? Back. Put this on normal displacement. And then what I'm going to do is same again, we're going to copy that map, go to our fur, make sure we're in the density map here, and in the spline curve where we're inverting it, we're just going to paste as instance again. If you're finding once you've added this in that the edges of your displacement aren't quite as nice and straight as they should be and are looking a bit jaggedy like mine are here. This is likely to do with the resolution or edge length on your displacement. Now if we go back to our concrete material, find our displacement and under the edge length we're just going to lower this right down to a sort of whatever the lowest value is here, sort of 0.4 would do in this case and you can up the subdivisions as well to a thousand to increase that and you should find that once you've done that your kind of meshes and your displacement will look a lot neater. It might take a little bit longer to load and you can always find a balance between the time it takes and the values you're putting in. But once you've done that, you should get a nice kind of crisp mesh as we're getting here. And this displacement looks as our kind of original map intended. In addition to this version, I also created a series of other trials of this technique, utilizing different hatches from Illustrator that I then just run through this process to create different versions of this effect. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of different ways and different kind of uses you can get using this technique. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you want to watch any other video tutorials on image creation or rendering in Vray and Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel.